Okay, so this is a very, uh, you know, applicable real-life problem here. So, you decide to buy a new jacket, and it's advertised at a price of $64. It turns out, though, you've got a coupon for 25% off that price. We want to know how much will the price be reduced at the register. So, we have the options of it'll be $4 off, it'll be $8 off, it'll be $16 off, or it'll be $25 off. So, I want to talk about a few different ways to do this. They're all equivalent, but uh, just a couple different approaches. We'll see, maybe you can find the one that you like best. So really what we want to find is I want to find 25% of $64. That's what I'm trying to do. So a couple things. So recall, so the first way I'm going to do it is just using um, some, some decimals and some multiplication. So recall that you can write a percentage as a decimal by basically just taking the percentage sign, moving it two places to the left, and then putting a decimal point. So you'd have 0.25. You can read the word of as multiplication. So 0.25 times 64. 0.25 multiplied by 64. That's what we're trying to do. So one way to do it would be just to you know, let's just do the, the arithmetic. So I'm going to take point, or excuse me, 64 multiplied by 0.25. Okay, so 5 times 4 is 20, so I'll drop down to 0, carry the 2. 5 times 6 is 30. 30 plus 2 is, well, 32. Now I'm going to take 2 times 4, that's 8. Uh, 2 times 6, that's going to be 12. So now let's add those up. 0, we've got 2 plus 8, that's 10, so we'll carry the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6. Uh, we'll just drop the 1 down since there's nothing to add to it. Notice I've moved, I've got a decimal place, two places over, so that means from here I count two places over. And lo and behold, we get the value of 16. So it says $16 off is what they're going to take at the register. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it would be to think about it in terms of fractions. Well, 25, uh, 0.25, we could write 0.25 as a fraction by writing that as 25 over 100. Again, that's equivalent to being 25%. And again, we're just going to multiply that by 64 over 1. Now, we could reduce here. If you think about reducing 25 and 100, well, 25 will go into both 25 and 100. 25 will go into 25 once, 25 will go into 100 four times. Okay, so we're still just multiple. now we would just multiply across the top, across the bottom. That's 64 divided by 4. Well, maybe you know this one, maybe you don't. You could even do long division. So 64 divided by 4. Well, 4 will go into 6 one time. 1 times 4 is 4. We subtract, we get a 2, we drop down our 4, and 4 will go into 24 six times. So it says 64 divided by 4 is 16, which is again, hey, the same value we got over here. Last but not least, the way I would actually do this mentally in my head, and the reason why we, I could do this easily in my head is because it's 25%. If this was, say, 23% or 24% or 26%, I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, but the idea is 50%, that's the same thing as one half, right? If it's 50% out off, it's half off. So half of 64, well, that would be 32. Well, 25% is going to be another half. So if we take another half of 32, again, we'll get 16. So that's another way to do it. It's, you're basically taking half of the original amount, so half of 64 is 32. If you take another half of that, you'll get 16, which is, again, another way to get it. So that's all there is to it. Um, again, this is very useful, applicable, um, real-life math for sure. So I hope it makes some sense. Again, different approaches, you know, the decimal multiplication approach, the fraction approach. If I didn't have such nice numbers, um, you know, again, if this was like 23%, 23 over 100 doesn't reduce nicely. This is probably the way I would uh, do it if I didn't have, you know, 
quote unquote, let me do my air quotes here, nice numbers. Okay, so if it wasn't something nice and round, you know, nice and, you know, 25% is easy to work with. If it was a different value, I think I would just jump to the multiplication, grind it out real quick, and move on to the next problem.